so today i am starting with the general microbiology history of microbiology medical microbiology is a subject of study of microorganisms which infect the humans we study the disease the cause how to diagnose the microbial infections how to prevent them and also how to treat them so the subject also deals with the study of responses of the human host to the microbial invasion or the entry of the antigens of the microorganisms the microorganisms are classified based on various classification methods so they can be classified phylogenetically so there is another method of classification called as adansonian classification so molecular or genetic classification which is the most accepted ones in the recent days so the sub classification of an individual um, organism or bacteria into a biotype a phage type or collision type so various classification methods are followed so we are going to place the organisms into different uh, categories like phylum class subclass order suborder family subfamily tribe subtribe genus and species and each of this the end with the suffix say for example the class end with the suffix ia example is gamma proteobacteria the orders they end with the ales for example enterobacteriales the family ends with the aca so for example enterobacteria the tribe ends with the a that is escherichia and genus and species that doesn't have a particular suffix and it changes with the different uh, types of the bacteria or microorganisms so there are two common terminologies which are used in the microbiology especially with respect to bacteriology one is a clone another is a strain a clone is a population derived by the binary fission of a single cell that means to say a clone of bacteria are derived from a single cell or single bacteria a strain is a population of a bacteria which is derived from a particular source say for example a strain of escherichia coli obtained from a patient it can be a pus sample or any sample for that sake okay so we are obtaining it from a particular source we call it as a strain if you are growing an organism from a single organism single bacteria we call them it call it as a clone so let's see the contribution of a various scientists in the past and uh, because some of these scientists they will be asked as a five marks question in your examinations so antony philips van leeuwenhoek so he was the person who observed the invisible microorganisms under the first ever built microscope so livenhook had an hobby of grinding the lenses and observing a diverse materials through them and he could appreciate lot of microbial structures in most of the materials and he named them as little animalcules so in the history the first ever a uh, design microscope was by levenhook 
So in his Samuels, he established that the puerperal sepsis was a contagious one. He found that the mode of transmission of the bacteria was by the doctors and the medical students who attend the women in labor. So he just advised to simply wash the hands to prevent the infection. But he was prosecuted by medical orthodoxy and driven insane because of his suggestions. So Edward Jenner, he developed vaccine against the smallpox and uh, turned the coin vaccine for the first time in the history. Louis Faster who is known as the father of medical microbiology. He was a French chemist and he has contributed a lot to the medical microbiology. So he coined the word microbiology for study of the organisms which are of microscopic size. In 1857, he established that uh, the fermentation was a result of act microbial, microbial activity. And also he proposed the germ theory of disease that uh, uh, the earlier concept of uh, the spontaneous generation of life was disproved with the help of uh, the classical Swanek experiment and uh, he proved that life cannot arise de novo, it can arise from their like. And also he introduced the techniques of sterilization like uh, steam sterilizers, autoclave, hot air oven, flaming and the most widely used technique of sterilization what is called as the pasteurization. He developed these techniques. He established the importance of the use of these cotton plugs into the culture media to prevent their contamination. He divided the bacteria into aerobic and anaerobic based on the oxygen requirement. So in an accidental observation, the, he made an observation that the dead chicken cholera bacillus could protect the, the poultry uh, chickens from the infection. And he developed the vaccine against the anthrax uh, by attenuating the anthrax bacillus by incubating it at a higher temperature and uh, inoculating the attenuated strain to the uh, animals. So one of his uh, um, uh, major contributions uh, of this uh, anthrax bacillus was demonstrated at the Pauli Fort in 1881. So he vaccinated cows, sheep, goat with the mm, uh, equal number of, number of controls and he challenged the vaccinated and unvaccinated uh, animals for the, for the pathogenic anthrax bacillus and uh, he noticed that all the vaccinated animals were survived whereas the, the unvaccinated animals they died. In 1885, he also developed the first vaccine against the rabies in humans. The Pasteur Institute in France was first built uh, with the help of the public contributions. And the next scientist is the Joseph Lister. So he was known as the father of antiseptic surgery. So he identified the atmospheric microorganisms are responsible for the post-operative wound infection and he introduced the aseptic techniques in surgery and the use of carbolic acid was a milestone in the evolution of the surgical practice. Paul Ehrlich, the first person to report the acid first nature of the tubercle bacilli. He developed the staining techniques for the tissue as well as for blood. 
So he, he studied the toxins and antitoxins in quantitative uh, manner and he proposed a toxin antitoxin interaction called the Ehrlich phenomena. So the biological standardization of the toxins was first estimated by Paul Ehrlich. He has a good contribution towards the immunology also. He proposed the side chain theory of antibody production and he discovered the the salverson which is called as a magic bullet which is an arsenal compound for the treatment of syphilis so bacteria erlichia was named after the uh, paul erlich as he invented the uh, the first isolated this bacteria in 1908 he received the nobel prize and uh, the founder of the is the founder of the Paul Ehrlich Institute, Germany. Ernst Raska, who developed the electron microscope, he visualized the microorganisms which are uh, later identified as the viruses. Rocks and Ersin, they identified the mechanism of the diphtheria toxin. So the similar toxins were also identified in tetanus and some other bacteria also. And also the the toxins were uh, found to be specifically neutralized by their antitoxins. Robert Koch, who is known as the father of bacteriology, he was a German bacteriologist. He introduced the staining techniques and the methods to obtain the bacteria in pure culture using the solid media. He discovered the vasculus tuberculosis and the cholera vibrio. He isolated the anthrax bacillus in pure culture and showed the spores in the anthrax bacillus. So he proposed his most famous postulates which are known as coach postulates. So coach postulates they are most commonly asked as a either three marks or five marks question. So he proposed the four postulates and then later on the fifth postulate was added by the few of the other microbiologists the first postulate it says that the bacteria should always or should constantly associate it with the lesion of a disease so it should be possible to isolate the bacteria in pure culture from the lesion of the disease the third postulate says the inoculation of such a pure culture into a suitable laboratory animal should reproduce the lesion of the disease. And the fourth postulate, it should be possible to re-isolate the bacterium in pure culture from the lesion produced in the experimental animals. The fifth postulate which was added later, not by the coach, was the specific antibodies to the bacterium should be demonstrated in the serum of the patients suffering from the disease. Some of the exceptions to coach postulates, so many viruses, rickettsia and some bacteria, they do not obey the coach postulates. Example, Treponema pallidum, the polio virus, chlamydia, etc. Some of the bacteria like Mycobacterium leprae and Treponema pallidum cannot be grown in vitro. So according to the second postulate, we have to isolate the bacteria from the lesion, which is not possible in this case. Neisseria gonorrhea is an example for the exclusion of the third postulate, wherein the inoculation of the, the microorganism into experimental animal should produce a similar lesion because of no av non-availability of any animal model for such bacteria. So this is an exception. So later on, uh, the Stanley Falvo, Falco he postulated the molecular coach postulates here the virulence trait under the study should always be associated much more with the pathogenic strain of the species than the non-pathogenic strains 
inactivation of a gene associated with a suspected virulence trait should substantially decrease the pathogenicity. The replacement of the mutated gene with the normal wild type gene should fully restore the pathogenicity. The gene should be expressed at some point during the time of infection and disease process. Antibodies and immune, syst immune system cells directed against the gene product should protect the host. So these are known as the molecular coach postulates. So if coach postulates is asked as a 5 mass question, I think it's better to write the coach post original coach postulates, exclusions and the molecular coach postulates to fetch more marks. Alexander Fleming who discovered the penicillin accidentally. So he was working on the staphylococci and uh, he left the uh, a plate of staphylococcus aureus on the pl on the table and he went for a small trip and he came back after one week he could see around the growth of a fungus penicillium he saw the the growth of the staphylococcus was not occurred so he thought there is a substance which is secreted by the penicillium fungi which could inhibit the staphylococci and that was a milestone in the invention of a first antibiotic ever in the history and penicillin later on was purified and resynthesized and uh, which was used till today so this is a time when the antibiotic era started so with the succession to the penicillin similar antibiotics were discovered in rapid succession and development of antibiotics and vaccines eventually raised the hope of eradication of infectious diseases but the bacteria and the dr uh, they developed the drug resistance and uh, they started uh, posing a serious difficulties in treating the conditions and uh, in since 1981 when the hiv was first uh, discovered the the pandemic spread of this virus occurred throughout the globe and uh, the consequent increase in the the aids cases so which could lead to the infection by opportunistic pathogens also so few of the the contributions of few of the uh, some uh, last few scientists so Karl Landsteiner who laid the foundation in the immunochemistry Niels Jern the he proposed the natural theory uh, natural selection theory for antibiotic uh, antibody synthesis and he also explained the chemical specificity and biological basis of the antibody synthesis Frank Burnett who proposed the clonal selection theory and Hans Christian Graham who developed the Gram staining technique in 1884. Charles Chamberlain, who constructed the porcelain bacterial filters, and uh, filters could uh, help in discovery of the viruses. Good Pasteur, he introduced the virus culture technique using the chick embryo. Eli Metnikoff described the phagocytosis and termed the phagocytes for the neutrophils, macrophages and other phagocytic cells and uh, the Caribbean Muller who discovered the PCR in 1993. So students that finishes the, the history of microbiology class. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel and also don't forget to press the bell button. Thank you.